Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating these sort of bursts, these almost speech bubble type things in Illustrator. But before we begin, let me introduce you to some of my other training, which is available at Udemy and also at Skillshare. I've included coupons for all of my Udemy courses in the description below and also an offer for Skillshare. Now my offers are typically at least as good as anything that you'll get at Udemy and Skillshare and often they're even better. So let's swing back to Illustrate. I'm going to create a brand new document and this is just going to be screen size at 1920 by 1080 but you can make yours whatever size you like. I'm going to draw out an oval so I'm going to the ellipse tool. Just going to draw a sort of oval shape just not quite circular. I'll go to the direct selection tool. I'm going to select over the anchor point just at the bottom of the shape here and press delete. Then I'm going to adjust the fill and stroke just so it's a little bit easier to see things. So I'm going to give it a sort of green stroke and I'm going to increase the stroke width here. And we could also give it a fill if we like. So I'm just going to choose a sort of yellowy green fill. Now to be able to turn this into a burst, what I want to do is to add some anchor points because right now there are only anchor points at three positions on this shape. And then I'm going to make the anchor points all angular, not curved. So to do this, we'll start by selecting over the shape and then choose Object Path and then add anchor points. So that adds an anchor point here and here. To make all these anchor points angular and not curved, the first thing we have to do is go and deselect one of these points because the tool that we want to use does not become available when all the anchor points are selected, but it will become available as soon as we deselect one. So I'm holding the shift key and just deselecting this one here. So all these other anchor points are selected and you'll see here that we get these conversion tools. So we can convert our selected anchor points, which is everything except for this one here, to corner points. Now if that doesn't work try converting them to smooth and then convert them back to corner points. I don't know why that works but it just does. So now I want to go and select over just this anchor point and again I'm going to make it a corner and if that doesn't work I'm going to make it a round one and then a corner because that works better. So now I've got these as straight lines. I can use the curvature tool to go and make the curves in my line. So I'm going to select the curvature tool. Now it's attaching itself to this point over here, but as soon as I go and place it over a line, it sort of deattaches. So I'm just going to drag in a bit. Now what I need to make sure not to do here is to drag this point here so that this curve is below this line. We want to make sure that the curve itself is kept above the line. So this never dips below this line. And I'm just going to drag on each of these lines just to make those curves. Now if you do the wrong thing and end up with something like this, just press Control or Command Z and go back and do it again. And again, on this end, you don't want this line to dip below the bottom of the curve, but it's looking just fine to me. Now I'm going to take this shape and make a duplicate of it, and I'm going to flip it. And we can do that all in one step by selecting the shape and choose Object Transform Reflect. We're going to reflect it over the horizontal, and we're going to make a copy of it because that will give us the original and a duplicate. So I'm just going to drag the duplicate down. Now these two shapes we want because of the way we've designed them so that they're not overlapping, this bend is not overlapping the midpoint. We actually just want to place them so that there's no space between them. To do that I'll select both of the shapes and I'm going to the Align panel. You can get to yours by choosing Window and Align. Now you're going to select to align to key object and it doesn't matter which one is your key object, just one of them is going to have this blue area, this sort of blue highlight if you like on it but it doesn't matter which. And then you're going to click here on Vertical Distribute Space because you've got zero set to the space. So that's just going to butt these two immediately up against each other. And it looks like that they were perfectly aligned anyway, but if they weren't, they would be now. Now we're going to join these together and you can do this in one of a number of ways, but the Shape Builder tool is a good method to use. You'll just select the Shape Builder tool and then just drag over these two shapes here and that joins them together to make a single shape. 
Now these points are looking just fine. This one over here does not look particularly good. If you get a point that misbehaves like that, maybe go and have a look at it and see if you can work out what's happening to it. So I think it had to do with one of these handles. So I've just adjusted the handle a little bit and that's just kicked the shape into a sort of pointy end. Now at this point, I want to move the stroke inside the shape. So I'll go to the appearance panel over here. I'm going to open up the stroke area. And what I want to do is to change the alignment of the stroke and I'm going to put it inside the shape. And that just controls the pointed ends just a little bit better. I'm also looking at this area now and saying, is it wide enough? And do I even want it to be there? So if you just want a shape that just has a single fill color on it, then you don't need a stroke at all. And you could actually disable the stroke. So you could just work with the shape looking like this. But if you want it to have an edge, then you can put a stroke on it and you can adjust the thickness of the edge to whatever it is that you want it to be. Now when you're drawing these shapes, if you want them to have more points than this, then you can just do the exact same thing. But this time, choose the Add Anchor Points tool a couple of times. So run it a couple of times so you get extra points that you can add around your shape. If you want something that is a whole lot more uneven, then you could make it so. So I'm going back to my ellipse tool. I'm going to make a shape that's a little bit more potentially circular. I'm going to the pen tool and I'm going to choose add anchor point. And in this case, I can add the anchor points where I want them to be. And so I'm just going to add a few more anchor points around this shape. So this is potentially going to give me a shape where things are not going to be as even as they are up here. Again, we'll want to select over the shape and we will want to deselect one of these anchor points by shift clicking on it with the direct selection tool selected. And then we're going to make these regular pointy anchor points if you like. Go back and select the one we didn't change previously and make it a corner point. Now that we've done that, we can go to our curvature tool and then start just dragging in on these shapes. And because the spacing of the anchor points is so much different this time, we're going to get an irregular shape. The only thing that you will want to make sure you don't do is to cross these over so you don't make a loop that is going to sort of force a crossover. So let me say something like this, for example, that's not going to look very good. So you just want to keep them sort of separated if you like. Let me just undo that. Once you've made the basic shape, you can go back to the direct selection tool, select on any of these points, because what you're doing is just simply adding anchors to the shape, and then you can just adjust the way they look. So they're just going to behave like any regular anchor point. And so you can just make sure that the shape is looking the way you want it to look. So these shapes are very simple to create for yourself. It's just a very simple process of creating a basic shape, adding a few extra anchor points and using that curvature tool to curve the things around. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and you've learned something about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video tutorial.